this, I'm not a Russian, so I, I can take for photo like this. <laughs> Maybe yeah, can I stop? Yeah. So welcome on the board. Uh, so let's let's start in the beginning because Europe is the, the closest, of course. Uh, this is just a, a, a typical Hungarian habitat, and uh, um, uh, this is a this is probably a raven nest in an electricity pylon and. Uh, 20, 30 years ago, when the ravens came back from the from the mountains, uh, they started to build a uh, nest on, on uh, these structures. And in the 90s, Saker falcons, in, in Hungary about 200 Saker falcons breed. It's Tatar, Tatar falcon, in Norwegian Tatar falcon. Yeah, so they start to use this, this uh, uh, nest type. But we realized, or not me, but I was a small kid when the people, ornithologists, realized this can fall down and the uh, whole sacred plush can destroy. So uh, they started, of course, this is like 10 years old photo, but in the late 90s, they started to use uh, aluminum boxes for sacred flowers on electricity pylons. So now it's in Hungary about four or five hundred. Um, nest box for sacral falcons on electricity pylons, it's different kind of electricity pylons, but usually 20 or 30 meters tall. So this is one, it was uh, 10 years ago we had a big pro project with sacral falcons and we put a lot of effort and we, we had a good relationship with the guys, with the electricity, the companies and we worked together, it was really successful and if we have any problems, okay, we go and help you. So, we have a really good relationship with uh, different companies. Oh, this is just, um, <coughs> we use also this nest box, but this is, uh, we use this on, on trees, and this is for a red-footed falcon. It's about uh, 1,100 or 1,000 or 1,100 pairs in Hungary this time. Uh -huh. So uh, the guys in the last 15 years, uh, they put also I don't know, probably a, like a thousand of wooden nest box for red-footed falcons. So this is the this is a different way. Like, okay, this we we need the guys for this because it's it's it can be dangerous. But like a twenty meters uh, tall tree, it's it's a little bit just need a big ladder. So um, this is a. This is my this is my absolute favorite birds. This is the saker falcon. Uh, the short story of this photo, I was super lucky. I went to um, uh, research the power lines, how many electrocuted birds under the power lines, and I just realized, oh, that's a sacred flock, one, and it's a male. It's a beautiful male, and uh, this is a rook, the prey is a rook, you can see. And probably a few minutes before I got there, it just caught the bird, and it's just, it was the bird for me like 10 or 12 meters, and I just, woo! So I took three or four hundred, but this is one of them for those. And this is a different story. Uh, so this is my hometown, it's Debrecen, and uh, um, we know this bird. Visit the area for for pigeons, for uh, feral pigeons, like 15 years ago. And this is the uh, her. This is the tallest building in the city. It's next to the railway station, and. Uh, this is the fire escape ladder, and the birds this always use this. If he caught the pigeon, it's always flew here. So I figured it out. Oh, I have to put there a camera trap. So this is the <laughs> it's like 60 meters from the ground. So I figured I get the permission and I put the camera trap there. So I I took like in the last in the three years during the three years I, it was like uh, 55,000 photos about the bird. So I, I really know that bird. <laughs> um, this is sometimes happened. It's not the bird, but you can see the the food remains because sometimes the bird left the food remains there and sometimes took it out and sometimes came back even for the next day came back for the for the food remains. So we usually talk about falcons don't eat leftover food, but they do sometimes. Yeah. So. Um, 
this is uh, this photo is I, I think it's a pretty unique because it's uh, this was also in the downtown and this is a uh, hunting for the, the feral pigeons this is the same bird but I was super lucky because that time I used to live in the top of the uh, I mean in the in, in the city I mean it's my my flat my apartment was the high on the top of the buildings so I could get out from the window so this is in the in the fifth level above the above the city and I could see okay the the, the, fog, the sacred falcon came to the town so this is in the downtown uh, so here we can see the sacred falcons chase the pigeon and this is a super rare photo I, I don't think is anyone have in, the, in this galaxy can took this photo here the swift the common swift chased the male sacred falcon <laughs> So I was super lucky, uh, this was in the summer, and in the summer the, the sacred falcon, uh, it's, they just, because they have a clutch, they have chicks, they just quickly come to the town, grab the food and take it out. In winter there is no, there is no chicks, they just, okay, I have spent two, two hours in the, uh, watching the city. They do, I, I could see the bird like watching, okay, what's going on. But in the summer, it's just a quick look, and this was in, I think, in June, July, and the swift chased the, of course, they don't like the, the sacred falcons. Uh, this is uh, uh, it's another photo about that bird. After two years, I tried to take photos. This was my, my favorite. Uh, the, the reason I put this photo here, because this is a female, and the female uh, birds, are, it's darker, generally it's darker, and this is a brood patch. So the the bird during the, the during the breeding, it's uh, when they they have uh, eggs, they lose feathers. But this is pretty cool. I've never seen like this. They they really lose the feathers, so they can the skin can really touch the eggs, so it can incubate the eggs. Um, okay, this is the now it's, it's not too common to see in Hungary sacred falcon nest like this uh, because. Is most of the nest which we know is in electricity pylons and in artificial nest, but this is a common buzzard nest. So we have like 15, 20 pairs of saker which still in. This is on a tree and in in a in a in a normal nest. So it's not too many now. This is more common. So the the chicks in in the artificial nest box now. It's like 85 percent of the population in breeds now in in more safe in, in the electricity pylons. Actually it's it's more safe because uh, on trees you, you can you know it's a, a different small mammals can can reach the uh, the chicks and they can just eat them and they have uh, surviving rate is, is can be higher in nest boxes. This is how it looks like this these guys it's a it's a female she, they they don't like the this is before bending, before I put the rings. So uh, each each nest I have to climb, and I, I put uh, nest uh, put rings on them. So this is usually how the the birds waiting for me. <laughs> so it's it's end of the season. Is my hand is is uh, looks pretty sketchy, and it's it's they are pretty aggressive. Yeah. Uh, this is how I I try to measure the weights. <laughs> This is from from the kitchen. It's, it's not too successful, but I I do I did it. Um, okay, this is I put this photo here. Actually, maybe we can turn off this light so you can. Yeah. Um, uh, this was one of my bird, which was uh, mm -hmm. and uh, this bird was reading in Germany. So they migrated in September, they, they went to Eastern Germany and I don't remember the guy's name, but uh, he took a photo in somewhere in the agriculture field. So this, this was in a uh, ring in somewhere in Eastern Hungary and in a uh, two months later it was in, in, uh, in Eastern Germany. So this is the um, uh, how after I, I put rings about 500 birds um, in uh, in Hungary and this is after 10 years I got recoveries what's happened with my birds so 500 nestlings and uh, this guy is close to the Kazakh border in Russia this was shooting <laughs> this was shot 
he, he, they killed. Uh, I think this was also killed in, in Ukraine. This was the photographing which you saw. So this was just photographed and I got the information based on the photo. Uh, this was in Italy. In, uh, this was electrocuted. And uh, this is another interesting story. Uh, we got an email from Libya. Hey guys, there is your bird. <laughs> And uh, that's for Falcon Ray. They, they use for Falcon Ray. So we, we try to talk with the guys. Is can you release later the birds, get the free? And it's just, of course, it's never going to happen. <laughs> okay, uh, so these were the Saker Falcons. Uh, I worked with them 10 years, but of course, there is other, other Falcons. Uh, this story, this Peregrine Falcon, is also from Hungary. This was in, in migration, just next to the road. Um, the, the story about peregrine falcons in Hungary, uh, they had a, a extinct 30 years. So they came back the first breeding, it was 2004. So before 2004, we didn't have any, any breeding. Uh, between, I think, uh, 70, 73 and 2003? Yeah, it's, it's 30 years. There is no peregrine falcon in Hungary. Uh, according to the DDT yeah, and, and other stuff. So they just came back and recently, I think it's around 80, 80 pairs, 90 pairs of peregrine falcons in, in Hungary. Uh, this is just a food delivery. That, this photo was taken in, in southern England. Uh, this is a, one of my colleagues who grew up with Saker falcons, but this is a, a peregrine falcon in, in uh, northern Siberia. How they migrate to uh, to Asia and Europe, and of course it's it's more accurate than, than the, just get the information based on the wings. So these are these are just some of them spend the winter in, in Portugal, some of them in southern Greece. Yeah, so it's of course I I'm, I'm guess you know it's the, the birds breed in further north. They migrate longer distance. So if, if we have a peregrine falcon in Poland or southern Sweden, they migrate maybe this area. But usually if the birds is, is far north, they migrate the, the longest distance. So that's why like if we have a peregrine falcon in Hungary, for example here, it's probably it's just the roaming. It's not they don't really migrate. The the big migration is always birds which they breed in the really north northern area. Okay, this is just uh, uh, where the peregrines breed in, in southern England. Uh, uh, this, is a, this is a different story. It's also a breeding. It, it was a raven nest, but this is western Iceland. It's a, I don't know why it's so, so small. Here, I can't put it in a bigger screen. Uh, maybe. Uh, so this is a jeer falcon. Oops. And uh, this is a juvenile. Uh, so this is after the after the uh, they already fledged, but they they got still get some food from the parents. Um, yeah. I hope I can do it. And this is one of the one of the parents. I don't remember. If this was a male or female. I think, I don't know the population in Norway, but the Geofalcon is like a few hundreds, a few hundred pairs of Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know the, the Iceland population is around 400 pairs. Um, and now is, uh, I don't know if uh, in, in uh, Norway is the, the white-tailed eagles breeds on, on, uh, on trees, but this is usually how it looks like a white-tailed eagle nest in Hungary. Yeah. Um, and uh, a chick, before, uh, that's not my, I, I don't uh, put rings on, on white-tailed eagles, this was my, by my colleagues. And uh, this is some photos about other favorite birds of white-tailed eagles. In, in Froya is a lot. <laughs> it's, we don't, I don't have to introduce the guys, but these are, um, it's a, a lot of not a lot, but a, a few feeding stations which operate during the winter. 
in Hungary and uh, in the last 15 20 years we we every winter we, we put a lot of food for different protected areas for for eagles white-tailed eagles and it's uh, sometimes we, we feed like sheep or sometimes with fish it depends on what we can get um, so these are from these are from uh, high blinds this is a, actually this is a local photo. This was from the kitchen window because I I feed the I fed the eagles in Havika close to Titran. So this was a, a juvenile and the adult bird. Um, um, try to do this in big. This was this was in a feeding station in. Uh, no, it's, it's running. Okay, I. Uh, uh, so. Um, this is how it's a feeding station in Hortobad. It's uh, this this was the best, but unfortunately, according to the weather, now it's it's winter is not too not too not too cold, so it's not really necessary to to feed the eagles. So like this feeding station is stopped to work because it's we, uh, when you take the food is like half tons of fish or half tons of. And the, the vehicles is stuck in the mud because it's pretty wet and it's not freezer, froze, uh, the ground is not frozen, so it's, it's really hard to take the food. So in the last three, four years, this feeding station is does stop to operate. But like this was I think 2016, 2017 was the last year maybe. And this time I was super lucky. Like uh, one day I, I saw like 80 birds or 90 birds in one place so so it's it's it's, it's a pretty cool and this this is a uh, um uh sometimes this is the birds are pretty close this is like a one meter just like 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 this so it's amazing and uh, uh so and and this place like after the 80 90 birds uh, i could read uh, 30 rings so is during this day I had 30 birds with rings and I, I took like I think uh, 1500 or 2000 photos and we could read the, the rings so it was 30 birds with rings and uh, one the longest distance was from the Kola Peninsula from Russia that was uh, 200 2300 kilometers or 2500 kilometers distance so the birds really they know this place like a long time ago and some, I think it, it was uh, two birds from Finland uh, like ten birds from Poland, so it's a it's a lot of birds here and we can read the... non Norway? No, we... I don't know, I mean I guess I know why, but uh, we get really, really frequently or almost none from Norway it's even golden eagle or even white-tailed eagle is uh, no. I think they, they really like the, the climate because next to the ocean is not too, you know, like in Froya, it's still not minus 20 or minus 25. So we never get, uh, I never heard Norwegian bird in, in, in Hungary, even golden eagle. So this is the, another cool guy. Uh, this is a honey buzzard. It's a male, but this was a, unfortunately this was an injured bird. Uh, it was injured on the, I think it's a left wing was injured. I'm not sure it's electrical to do something like that. Uh, this is, this guy is a, um, uh, a lesser spotted eagle. Try to, to pick. Uh, they start to breed when they Uh, they start to be this when the age is like four or five years, like white-tailed eagles or imperial eagles usually. And I think this is a second or third years old bird. They really like uh, like uh, after they cut the grass and they they collect the uh, uh, different small mammals or different animals. Uh, I put this photo because this is an imperial eagle, and the imperial eagle population is is pretty now, good now. In the 80, 83, 84 was the, the lowest point of the imperial eagle population. Uh, 
it was around like 10 or 15 pairs, similar like the white tailed eagles, almost extinct from Hungary. And now it's, it's a lot of protection and effort, and now it's more than 200 uh, pairs of imperial eagles. It's a super cool guy. And I put this photo because, of course, to compare with this is a Eurasian hobby. Uh, it's a pretty cool, this is an adult bird. But I put this photo, it's not the best photo, but I put this because I was surprised these holes is from uh, is from guns, it's from uh, from hunters. They don't really like, still don't really like, so okay. I, I shoot this, I try to shoot this guy. So these are the pellets, you know, the, what is the name? Oh, I don't know the English name. Yeah, you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a this is the red kite. Maybe sometimes in southern southern Norway, is it sometimes it showed up. This is mm -hmm. yeah, oh, it's a few pairs or I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this was uh, we don't really have in Hungary, but now it's like 15 pairs maybe. Uh, but this was photo was taken in in uh, England. And in England, is the last 20 years, they really increasing. It's a really good, now I think it's like a thousand or even more pairs. And this is a wing tax. Uh, they use wing tags on, on kites. I'm not, a, I'm not a great fan of, of wing tags, wing tags on, on raptors, but like kites or vultures, it's okay. Because they are not the fast, really fast moving birds like falcons or eagles. It's, Kite is, you know, this kite is like, or maybe harriers. But I'm not crazy about wing tags. This is a, a nestlings of a, a red kite. This was in uh, in Hungary. <coughs> I spent I spent two years to work with the red kites. This is in southwest of Hungary. There's a small population left. And this is how the the I put this photo. This is in that was a workshop in 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 England and. Uh, this is, they have a great management in, in uh, about red kites in England. So look at this, they have a red kite boss. Like uh, every day they are running and it's like, okay, this is the, we protect the wildlife and they have a really good management. I really like that. Um, this is a sad story. Um, this is a snake eagle, a short toed snake eagle. This was a first year old bird and uh, this was the first and I, I don't hear anything about like, Another uh, example, but this bird probably the bad weather in November or end of October. This was a foggy and hit the hit the wire, so the, the bird hit this wire and, and died. It's not too not too often happen, but that's that's probably the case because it was uh, under under the lines. Uh, this is the uh, how it's we try to manage I'm, I'm still I try to read more about the Norwegian situation but like the electrical lines like the 22 kilovolts uh, we put a lot of plastic cover like the arms cover by, covered by plastic so we can we can save the birds so this you can see uh, uh, the people put a special like insulation on, on the on the on the pylons, it's in the last 20, 30 years with the companies we put like I don't know five, ten thousand, even more. I don't know. It's it's, it's in, in Norway. You put anything like against electrocution, like similar like the uh, arms, like the or any protection. Do you do you use anything or? The question depends, I guess, it, uh, on the amount of voltage. Yeah, high mm -hmm. I mean, this I is this is 22 kilowatts. This is just a normal between cities and towns and whatever. So uh, I mean, the higher the big the big ones, they are not too dangerous because they have big uh, enough space. But this this is the most uh, common, and they they just have, the birds can easily electrocute it. I, I think in that size, yeah, it's like. Uh -huh. it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
kan ut en ekstra arm. Aha, ekstra arm. Som sikking arm. Aha, aha. And the lives or crossing legs. Aha. Det er ut om sånn ekstra... Protection. Yes. Aha. Not protection, but... Not insulation. So it's something that the bird can see. You can see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aha. Aha. I see. It's like a small balloon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aha. Aha. I would like to know more about that. So this was the small section of the raptors. This is the last photo. This is a Ural all. And I put this photo because uh, this is uh, every nest box, which for owls or fa maybe falcons, not really, but for owls, they put a small mirror. So when you in the spring, you are going to check which nest box is occupied. You just have a look. Okay, there is a bird and you can go further. So you don't have to climb. You don't have to, you know, check what's going on. You just have a look and the bird look at you and okay. Next time I'm coming back. So it's it's really I really like this method. So one time I just took a photo and okay, this is a Ural all. Uh, okay, some some photos from other from uh, Europe. This is a, a bee eater on, on during migration. Uh, it, I think it was September. So this is just a, uh, some some bird photos. I put this photo, I know it's not a crazy waxwing in Norway, but in Hungary it's it's a, it's every three or four years we have waxwings. In it's it's pretty not common. I mean it's if they have invasion they you can see relatively easy, but just every three or four years. So oh this is a good year for waxwing, okay, but some years is completely completely nothing. I don't know if in Trondheim probably it's every winter or there's no one here. Oh, my wife saw two days ago, saw in Titron. Okay. Yeah. Normally we have in the past. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This year we have some very situation. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, actually this was in in a uh, in uh, not far from my home. And this is also I know it's not a not a rare and something cool in. Norway, we have also, but I, I really like the species, so I just, I just put here a female green woodpecker. Um, this is a. Uh, try to. A harlequin dog? Uh, okay, I don't know this. But this, uh, this was in Iceland in, uh, in the spring. And the uh, Iceland gull. This was a, uh, also a spring, uh, but I think it's juvenile bird uh, from the last year, or from the previous year. And some uh, photos from Hungary, Eversets, uh, it's a Skuako heron. This is a, in a horseback region, it's, it's a pretty common, relatively common species. And uh, the black stork, it's a, uh, we don't have too many uh, about 200 or 300 pairs in Hungary, but this was a terrible year because this was a super super dry and it's it's like five or ten percent of the population started to breed because the birds realized all the water is gone even in the spring. So they this was a this year was a terrible year for for black stork in Hungary. This is a, I know it's not a rare birds in, in Norway, but I think in Hungary we have like maybe 15 or 20 pairs, so it's yeah, it's a it's a rare something. Uh, and I know this is also not a, uh, a rare something in, in Norway, but in September and uh, uh, maybe early October, like one 100 or 150 birds cross the waterway in eastern Hungary. And uh, but I, I talk with the guy from BirdLife Norway, and the the interesting thing uh, in the Scandinavian uh, population in the last fifty years, they put like thousands of rings. And I know in Hungary, in this area, it's a small. They really like this short grass stuff in Hortobad because it's a lot of sheep, and nobody never seen any dotterel with rings, never. 
So I, I saw the, the even the Norwegian population is is uh, is never uh, going on the, on the Carpathian basin. So in, in cross Hungary, it's really interesting. So probably these guys is somewhere in Russia or something like that. So I'm, I've never heard about any ringed doctoral. This this uh, puffins is is from Scotland. This this beautiful guy is in uh, in uh, Iceland. Purple sandpiper also from Iceland, and uh, red knots in uh, also I, I, uh, Iceland. Sandwich tern from southern southern England. The ruby tern stone in breeding plumage, and this is a. <laughs> I just put the okay the a couple of photos from it's a, from Hungary. Okay, I put these photos because uh, when. Uh, they have a, this is a soslik, this is one of the uh, most uh, favorable food for sacred falcons and imperial eagles. So this is the, we really try to increase the population of these guys, but it's, it's uh, we try to manage them because it's a, it's a really good food source, but uh, uh, it's not easy, it's not easy. If they really like uh, area, they, they, they live there and they, they, uh, the population is good, but otherwise it's, it's really hard. And the salamander from northern Hungary. Okay, so this was the, this was the Hungarian section. And now, uh, let's go jump to Asia. Um, so I spent uh, three uh, three seasons in, in Asia in uh, in uh, Kazakhstan, uh, Mongolia, and, and China. But this photo is from the far east Russia. This is Kamchatka. Uh, there is like I think 21 or 25 active volcano, and this is one of them which I climbed. Uh, this is the this is central. We are in central Mongolia now. And uh, this is a massive uh, Saker Falcon project in the last 10, 15 years. Uh, and uh, okay, I, I jump a little bit. This is a this is the previous year. Uh, this is in the expedition in Kazakhstan, northern Kazakhstan. This is how the uh, situation. We stopped in the snow for one day. <laughs> so we, we slept next to the road in the just in the agriculture field. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, that expedition was one of my first expedition and uh, we spent one one and a half month in uh, uh, in uh, central and northern Kazakhstan. We drove six thousand three hundred kilometers and without roads, usually no roads. I won't tell, I, it's just, it, it was really hard. And, uh, and the other thing, it's, uh, so I, uh, there was three Russian guys, and uh, the problem is, even for Russians, Kazakhstan is still really, I mean, of course, a lot of people speak Russian in Kazakhstan and everything, but uh, when you do an expedition and you, you are a foreigner, every town or cities, you have to show up at the police station and, okay, we are here, and... Can we go further? Can we? And it's they always want money. And the, the leader of the, the guys, okay, we, we try to avoid that. And uh, and uh, we, we just, we always, if we know there is a city, we try to avoid. So after two weeks, we have no food, no water, no nothing. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. And we find 15 nests of sacred fun. <laughs> uh, so this is the this was a little bit more uh, comfortable in, in central Mongolia because this was a study area and here uh, like a pilot uh, area is like with uh, I think 2,000 or 3,000 nest box I will show you the photo uh, so this is a well it's a study well known study okay this is China this is the Yeah, I tried. I tried this one. Yeah, I tried. I tried. 
it doesn't really work. It's just so small and it's much, much better. Yeah, it looks better, just okay. The problem is if I do in one like this, um, yeah, I mean, I can go uh, easily further. Um, okay, this is the this is the border of, of Russia and China and Mongolia. This is the uh, this is the uh, the Altai Mountains, the southern Altai Mountains, uh, and we find here Saker Falcons too. This is the team of 2006, the Chinese team uh, looking for Saker Falcons. Uh, this is, you don't see too often this photo, so I make it a bigger one. Um, this is the, the famous place of, of Yemen. This is the end of the south, um, southwest of, of, oh, I have southwest of, of Yemen. Uh, so this is the Red Sea and this is already Africa. But this is the Arabian Peninsula. So this is the place where um, thousands of thousands of raptors migrate every season. Uh, it's really not a safe place, and it's <laughs> and it's uh, not too many birders uh, visit this this area. Um, but, but did you actually go there? Yeah, I mean, this is I took this photo, so it's yeah, yeah. yeah that's why it's the photo is here. Uh, I could spend here a half day because. Uh, uh, I met a few guys and they they said uh, if you don't want to be kidnapped or killed it's the next uh, day you have to leave so they were really nice because they told me we won't kill you right now but you have to leave so yeah they they, they were they were nice so um, that's that's the story of this place but it was it was really really it's a really unique unique place. So it's called Babel Mandel. It's called Babel Mandel. Um, so these are the falconers. So it's, if in this region, the people, uh, it's a really long tradition, like a long time ago. So they, they're looking for peregrine falcons or they're looking for sacred falcons. So they try to catch them. I try to communicate with them, but I, unfortunately I don't speak Arabic. They don't speak English, of course, at the end of the everything. But I really appreciate. I asked them if I can take a photo, so they won't kill me. And they they said it's okay. So uh, this is also Yemen. It's generally Yemen is a pretty dry habitat, but they have some really nice mountains, and uh, some of them um, looks like this. And some some this is just for fun. Uh, they are. I love the buildings in Yemen. These these buildings is uh, two and three or four hundred years old, and they still use it. It's it's amazing. I really like remote areas, and they they keep the culture and everything. Okay, this is uh, this is the public transport in Kamchatka. Uh, we we went a little bit further north, uh, um, so. Uh, this was the this was the local bus. This is also it's just I put these photos together because different uh, public transport this transport in India. How is it looking like? And when in this is in eastern Turkey when we ask uh, that's the book in my hand and I asked the little boy about uh, the corso the cream colored corso if they know where is the bird. But of course, he, he didn't know. Um, okay, this is a, I'm, I'm, I'm really appreciate. I, I, would, I could be here. This is in uh, northern Iran, and uh, uh, it's from the small town. We could ride a bicycle. Nobody understand how is it possible to uh, ride a bicycle in the desert, but we could, we could make it. This area is is a, uh, it's a really cool because this is the. Uh, the last area where the, the Asian cheetah is still alive, like 40, 40 or 50 individuals. So it's probably going to be extinct, but this is the place. And uh, I will show the photo. Okay, this is a, uh, you will see the, 
the raptors are coming. Uh, this is a stellar seagull, a stall of stellar seagull. I find uh, in a, I think it was a fox, but I'm not sure about it. It was a small hole in the ground and it's like, oh, what is that there? And, oh, that's a skull. And I figured it out, oh, this is a stellar seagull. So I'm crazy about skulls and everything. So it's, no, it's my fault. <laughs> um, this is a, this is the, Mo in, Mo in Mongolia, um, this is a monk vulture. It's a, they have a really massive, uh, uh, population of monk vulture in Mongolia because they have a really big livestock in Mongolia like millions of cows, millions of camels and sheep so is the, the vultures are doing well in Mongolia this is the monk vulture it's flying this is an interesting thing because this is also still central Mongolia but um, uh, this is a Himalayan griffon it's a Himalayan griffon. Uh, this was probably a second year old bird. It's, it wasn't an adult bird. And it's really interesting if the like this horse was dead, and the only only place where the bird could reach anything which available, it was the the back door. Yeah, I could see. This is a griffon vulture in in uh, in Yemen. They have a really nice good population there. Uh, Egyptian vulture, in, this photo was taken in India, is actually next to the Taj Mahal. My that time girlfriend is, went to visit the Taj Mahal and uh, oh, I'm going to birding, so this is, this is much better. Egyptian vulture. But this is a, the, is, there is two subspecies of the Egyptian vulture. This is a yellow bill and it has a yellow bill and this, this is the subspecies. It's different than the European one. This is a this is a Loma Geyer in a, I took this photo in in a, uh, in China. I I walked for this bird like six hours because we checked for different valleys valleys and my valleys was empty and my colleagues was with the with the nest. So I woke up in the morning so three hours walk and see the birds. So. Uh, this is a sacred falcon in, in Mongolia and uh, we put satellite transmitter on, on, uh, on uh, sacred falcons in Mongolia. This is how we get the weight of the sacred falcons and this is the nest, uh, the big artificial nest project in, in, uh, in Mongolia. So they put like two or three thousand nest box like this. It's a huge area and they, the sacred flocks love this nest box. And usually the pole is the, this is a pole and it's like, like this tall, it's like two or three meters and the, the falcons love this. But not just falcons, but okay, this is a, the, where is the bird the, in Kamchatka, is the stellar seagull. I remember in even the first day at the, the National Park, or it's it's a relatively common bird. So if you go to Kamchatka, you this was the one of the first bird which we saw. It's like, oh it's a stellar seagull. Okay, yeah, okay, now <laughs> because it's it's a it's a really uh, really nice bird. And some uh, I don't put a bigger uh, some some photo about the Stellar seagull and uh, there is the two the a pair, a blue pair. Uh, this is back to Mongolia. Uh, this is a step eagle. So previously you saw the the Babel Mondeb, the the migration route. They this species is particularly used that way to go to Eastern Africa. So these guys is breeds in. Uh, Central Mongolia and Kazakhstan, and they are going to move to Kenya and Tanzania, and they spend the winters there. So this guy is uh, cross uh, used that way, uh, that migration uh, way. So this is a steppe eagle in Mongolia. Um, this is an osprey in Yemen. Um, and a changeable hawk eagle in in uh, in India. And. Uh, uh, black shouldered kite in, in India, little all in Iran, 
and now it's some nest photos. Uh, this this is the Lamagayar nest. In, I think it was around uh, 2,005 meters uh, the elevation. Um, the Saker falcon nest. In, how does it look like in in China? It's uh, it's really interesting because the Saker falcon. Uh, uh, used to breed in, in cliffs in Hungary, in the mountains, uh, but that was 2004 was the last year we have in Hungary sacred falcons in cliffs and all of them came back to the lowlands. So now in Hungary only only in trees or electricity pylons, no more cliff nesting pair, but of course like in, in China it's they, they use nest. Okay, do you know why? I, have. I mean, uh, this probably the that time also was a small population in the 70s, 80s in Hungary, sacred falcons. So they, it was like a refuge for the birds, even for imperial eagles, even for sacred falcons. In the 70s, 80s, hunters is like okay, everything. Now it's much better. So they they moved to the mountains, which was a little bit more protected than the agriculture lowlands, and. Uh, and now imperial eagles and sacred falcons came back to the uh, to the lowlands. Uh, I'm 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 really I'm really proud of this this photo. It's I'm sure you. It's uh, uh, I have no idea what kind of animal did this. Probably a bird, but this is a nest of a sacred falcon, and I find it. <laughs> And I'm, I'm, this is the this is in Kazakhstan, and this is the northern part of the Oral Sea. Uh, it was like ten days drive, or a little bit maybe more, to get from Russia here. And uh, uh, this is a like a sandstone. So this this uh, this is like a, it's not a rock. It's really like super soft something. And they just oh I was super surprised. It's oh it's a uh, so I'm I'm. I'm really proud of this something. <laughs> um, okay. And this is the nest of the of the stellar seagull. Uh, I know it's not uh, not the best photo, but this this bird. Uh, so, so that guy on the right one, this is already dead. So sometimes the if they don't have enough food, it's one of the chicks. Or sometimes they have two, but this is uh, this is already like probably it was like three or four weeks old, and it's it's died. But this is still alive. So um, it's uh, I don't know. Finally, homely this bird was okay, but. So this is the other nest of the, of the stellar season. So sometimes they put on the cliffs and sometimes they put on, on a tree. So it depends on. Um, this is a nest of the monk vulture in in the uh, northwest of China. So this this uh, uh, China expedition it was between Kazakhstan and Mongolia. It's there's a, a small part of China. Step eagle in in, uh, in Mongolia. Also, they just simply breed on the ground. So there is no tree, nothing is like the grass is like this short, and they just breed on the ground. <laughs> they, they they don't have too many options. Uh, this photo is uh, in uh, in Yemen. I think these these guys. I try to take photo of flying photo of the black bellied. Uh, chestnut bellied uh, sand grouse and this finally it's a, it's a peregrine cane. <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize this that bird is coming. Uh, this is a palace sand grouse in uh, in China. Maybe you know about this guy the sand grouse they are super cool. This is the only female individual these are all males. Uh, they they carry the water in the, the feathers of the belly. So they, they also drink, of course, but they are coming to sit in the water and uh, five minutes 
and all the feathers are sucked by water and they they take the water for the chicks. So it's like 20, 30 kilometers. So it's a pretty cool, pretty cool something. So they fly back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is also a dream, European birders dream. It's a black lark. It's a, I don't, I didn't have too many opportunity to take photos in Kazakhstan because it was a really hard, actually this was in the middle of the road. I think this was a road. But it was so muddy. Um, and this photo was taken uh, with slide films. At the beginning I used slide films. It's two years. Uh, this is the black throated thrush. I think sometimes. It hasn't had one yet, but four or five years ago. Four or five years ago. Say that it was winter. Oh, yeah, the whole winter? Wow. This is in, uh, in uh, north, northwest China. Yeah. Uh, it's a citrine wagtail. Maybe sometimes you have citrine wagtails. This was in Mongolia. This is a crimson winged finch. This is in uh, around 3000 meters in Iran. Uh, uh, green beater. Green beater. This was taken in India. And uh, some some Siberian species. This is the uh, red-headed buntings. I think red-headed buntings. Yeah. Uh, the meadow bunting. These are these are in China. And this is in Kamchatka. Is a, a yellow yellow-breasted uh, uh, bunting in Kamchatka. And also, uh, uh, I think you saw this guys. It's a ruby throat. This was the one is on. And uh, two cool guys of, of the, um, this called ground jays. It's only four species of ground jays lives in, in, uh, in the world. Is uh, two of them, uh, I mean, uh, is all of them in Central Asia. It's some of them in uh, Uzbekistan, in Iran, uh, and one of them in Tibet, and one of them in, in, uh, in China. So these are four guys, and two of them. Uh, this is the this is the Mongolian ground jay, and this is the Plashka ground jay. This was taken in, in uh, China, and this is in this. Actually, this is, this was one of the reason I one of the reason I visited Iran. This is the this is the bird. Is it hard to find? No, no. That was you remember the photo with the with the cheetah and the bicycle. That was the next to the road. There was many of that, yeah. But it was hard to get there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like uh, before that night, midnight, the police asked me. We have to go to the police station at midnight because they they want to ask us what what are you looking for here. And we spent there one or two hours at midnight. So we had sometimes a fun, quite a fun situation. And this is a, a Mongolian finch in, in China. Mongolian lark. It's a, actually it's a really big lark species. It's a it's a pretty massive bird. Uh, a red bill chuff. This is also in Mongolia. It's a I don't know. It's the people who use this house and they just disappeared and the, the birds used for breeding. <laughs> so this bird breed in this house <laughs> in the chimney. They use the chimney. Uh, this is a Palestine sunbird in, in Yemen. And uh, rock bunting, African rock bunting in, in Yemen. Maybe you know is the, that part of 